Travis Dykes on the bass, y'all. So a few months ago, I had the opportunity to play bass on some shows in Europe. And measly old me thought that I was gonna go there, there wasn't gonna be many differences or anything like that. Everybody does the music stuff the same. But my, was I wrong. I learned a lot of different lessons playing bass in Europe. So today, I wanted to give you guys an inside look at the lessons that I learned playing bass in Europe. Back at it again with the crew. Back at it again with the crew. Where are we going? Headed to Katowice. Gotta find some pizza. Just to eat, maybe get another Reese's pizza. <laughs> so the first show we have in Europe is in Katowice, Poland, which is a jazz and arts festival. And then after that, we have a headlining show in London, England. This is gonna be the first time we've played a show in London and also the first time in Poland too, right? This is gonna be like uh, one of those things that's like, we're dipping our toe into it. And so we don't know exactly what all the, the numbers and stuff will be, but. So we're gonna rehearse real quick and then get ready to head out tomorrow. Well, we just found out that our, what is it, our connection in Atlanta is 10 minutes. So we're gonna have to hustle when we get to Atlanta. So we barely made our connection. We got there and Atlanta's a massive airport and we got to the gate and we were the last people in line boarding the plane, but we got there. Here we go, headed to Paris. So the first thing I learned traveling to Poland is that the time difference is tough. In Nashville, Tennessee, it was seven hours behind where Poland was. So by the time we got to Poland, we were wiped out. <laughs> but we still had a whole day in Poland. So we tried to keep ourselves awake for the entirety of that day. We wanted to stay awake so we can get rest and be ready for the show the next day. What have you been, what have you been saying? Is it ch chich? Chest. Chest. What does that mean? It means hello. It also means goodbye. So the green room was really nice on this one. They had everything on our rider. And if you don't know what a rider is, it's pretty much a list of requirements for the artist to come to an event. But for this one, they supplied everything. So since this is a festival, there are a lot of artists here and my goodness, it was a little bit hectic getting on stage and having to do our sound check and everything, but that's normal for any festival. Now, another lesson I learned on this one is that the languages aren't the same. 90% of everybody who was a stagehand or anything like that was speaking Polish and only a couple of the leaders knew English. And so that was a, a bit different trying to tell them, hey, my amp needs to go here or the drums need to go here. But it worked out really well after we figured out and who knew English. Now, another lesson I learned that was probably one of the biggest lessons I learned this whole trip is that the power is different in other countries. Now, if you travel to another country before, you've probably seen adapters like this that have the US plug to, you know, whatever plug you're of the country you're going to. But here, you're not supposed to use these when it comes to using pedals because of the amount of power and voltage that goes through in other countries is way higher than it is here in the States and can fry any of your electronics. I was getting ready to try and plug mine in and then somebody was like, hey, 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 I didn't even realize that none of my plugs were made for any of these. So when we got there, they had us a little power bank where they could control how much power goes to our pedals so they can know exactly what's needed without frying our pedals. So after locking everything in, getting everything sound checked, it's time to get started with the first show. Travis Dykes on the bass, y'all. So after the show, we were able to hang out with some friends and make some new ones as well and get back to the hotel to go to London the next day. Are right, y'all ready for London? Oh, you London. sound like you from London or something. <laughs> All right, 
<laughs> we got to get back to the hotel. <laughs> now, I didn't think that there was going to be any issue getting from Poland to London, but I did not realize this until I got here, but there's train strikes right now in London. So the train from the airport to where I'm staying is like an hour, hour and a half. So I'm a little bit nervous. And also, I don't know how the luggage situation with my base traveling from plane to plane in Europe is going to go. So um, this is going to be a very interesting day today, but uh, we're going we're gonna to make it to London in some kind of way. So I'm about to head downstairs and then head to London. When I got to London, there was no trains available and I had to call the only friend that I had in London to see if he could pick me up from the airport and take me to my hotel and thank goodness he was available. My friend's name was OC and bro, thank you for being a lifesaver. Now a huge lesson that I learned when it comes to traveling from country to country on planes in Europe is that the overheads are not the same size as they are here in the United States. The planes are a little bit smaller and this particular airline that I was going on expected me to purchase a separate full price seat for my instrument to go on the flight with me. And so I wound up talking to a supervisor and they allowed me to do a gate check on it. But a huge thing I learned with that is that it's not the same and every flight's very, very different. Now, after getting to London, we had some off days leading up to our show. And so I was like, you know what? Let me meet up with one of my friends, Dana Fisher, who is an incredible bass player in the London area. And he told me, he's like, bro, we gotta go to this bass shop. It's the best bass shop in London. And I was like, okay, cool. It's called the Bass Gallery. So we are here at the gallery with Dana. There's so many bases already right here at the window. I'm just like, oh gosh, it's gonna be sick. So let's go check it out. Oh, wow. Yeah. There's a lot of bases. Yeah, there. Uh, there is definitely more than I've seen. <laughs> this is how big it is. Oh my gosh, I feel like there's like, I have enough space for all this. Because <laughs> you know, um, we receive a lot of commission sales from customers, so we, we keep like getting bases, getting bases, getting bases, and then eventually we don't know where to put them. <laughs> now I'm not gonna lie, this was probably the coolest base shop I've ever been to ever. I don't know if I've ever been to a place that was just so many bases, so many different types of bases, and so many great brands of bases. So if you're ever in London, England, and you have any extra time, go check out the base gallery. So I know I really haven't talked about this a ton, but I wrote a bass book in partnership with Hal Leonard. It just released this year, but one of the things that they let me know is that the bass book is released in Europe as well. And so one of the things I wanted to do while I was here is take a journey and see if I could find the bass book in any music store in the area. No luck, couldn't find the book anywhere, but it's okay. You can find it online. It's on Amazon. It's on pretty much a lot of booksellers that are online, their bookstores, but I guess it's not physically here in the, the UK quite yet. It's all good. It just came out a few months ago, so I'm not surprised. I just wanted to see if it would be anywhere at any of these music stores. So I've been to London, England before, and I will say it is still up there. It was one of my top favorite cities that I've ever visited. And what's so cool about everything is that everything looks historic. Like even the Wendy's that I went to to grab a drink and use the restroom looked historic like it came from the 1700s. But what was really fun is that our venue was connected to the train station. So we literally got off of our train and walked straight into the venue. So now we're loading into our last show. Now with all these historic buildings, not every building in London has elevators. And so when we loaded into our venue Oslo, it was all stairs up, I think two stories, and it was a lot to carry up all of our stuff. So I will say the green room of this particular show was really cool and vibey, very much so a smaller, 
type venue. And for the artist I was playing with, this is his first time doing a headlining show in London. So we really didn't know what to expect. But when I tell you people showed up, people showed up. <laughs> So I will say, playing bass in other countries is so enlightening because there's a difference in culture, there's a difference in process, there's different music, different people, and it is just amazing. And it affects you more than it does musically, it affects you as a person, or at least it did me. So if you ever get the opportunity to go and travel and play somewhere internationally, take it. I challenge you to take it because I'm telling you, it can change your life forever. So if you guys like this video, feel free to drop a comment below. And also, if you wanna support this channel, feel free to click on any of the affiliate links in the description of this video and make a purchase through them to where this channel gets a kickback to help bring you more videos. And also check out my website, travisdykesmusic.com, where you can get different merch and different things from the website to help support this channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time.